Howdy folks, it's Thursday, April 21st. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Hustle writer Juliet bennett Ryla, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. Later in today's episode, Netflix stock fell off a cliff yesterday, down 35%. What the hell happened and what is the company doing about it? We're going to discuss, of course, but before we get into that, as always, here are a few things you should know. Let's get crack lacking. How are we doing, Juliet? I am doing well. Thank you. Very nice. What are you following today? Today, I want to talk about AI, artificial intelligence, not the movie. Uh, in the newsletter today, we're talking about how Google Docs has a new AI tool that helps you write more inclusively, hmm. except it still has a way to go. So Vice tried it out and it did a few things that were kind of cool. In one text erp, it took the word policemen and suggested a more gender inclusive term might be police officers, which is true. Interesting. Yeah. It also dinged words like landlord and motherboard. So it seems like it's just lacking context, which is, you know, always the problem with AI. Right. But it's having kind of a moment. There's been a lot of AI stuff in the news lately. Um, If you're looking for something a little more impressive, there is Dolly, which is like a combination word of Salvador Dolly and Wally, the movie, I guess. Right. It's a neural network that creates images from text descriptions, no matter how zany the description is. I saw one that was a bowl of soup that looks like a monster made out of wool, and another that's a baby radish and a tutu walking a dog. Both were honestly very good. Yeah, I mean, those are crazy. I've seen some of those too. And just to clarify that this is literally a tool Mm -hmm. that will let you input text description of what you want to see uh, of an image you have in your mind very quickly. And they're good. Like, they're exactly what they are, even if it's Totally wild. Yeah. I read about a cool one today in The Verge. It's called Wild Book. It's an AI platform that analyzes photos of animals to aid conservation efforts. Oh, cool. Instead of having scientists out in the field trying to monitor where these animals are and what they're doing, or alternatively, tracking them with GPS devices, it's an AI platform that will look at photos, and it's so good at it that it can look at a leopard spot and always tell that leopard. Interesting. Yeah. And um, perhaps less useful, there is also a lot of AI stuff on Reddit. And am I the a-hole is a very popular Reddit forum. It is. It has like millions of, of members, I believe. Yeah. And so the, the gist is basically someone's like, OK, this is a situation that happened. Am I the one who's at fault or was it the other person or is everybody or is nobody at fault? And, and people right. weigh in. And this forum is called Are You the A-Hole? And it is entirely run by bots. So you put in your scenario and bots will determine if you are the a-hole or not. Here's an example for you. The scenario is I brought velociraptors back from the dead and they almost ate two children. The children got out alive, but now they want me to shut down the park. I keep the dinosaurs in. I think that's ridiculous. They got out okay. I don't see any problem. And then the verdicts were um, not the a-hole, but I'm worried that you're running a dinosaur safari as a fun park and not a zoo. You're the a-hole. They escaped and they're still looking for revenge. I don't think you really understand the formula for a good horror movie, pal. And the toss-up verdict was, it doesn't matter if the velociraptors almost ate the kids. It's still not cool to bring them back from the dead and then keep them in a place where people can potentially be eaten by them. Oh. So, I don't know. I think those verdicts are uh, pretty fair, honestly. Yeah, I do too. So, I was following this story about Lucky Charms. And it appears Lucky Charms have kind of lost their luck for the moment. Because General Mills is facing thousands of consumer complaints that... The cereal is making people sick. For context, Lucky Charms is a very, very large business in its own right. 300 million in sales annually, 100 million boxes sold each year. And there have been some, and by some I mean quite a bunch of complaints about the cereal poisoning people. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, you know, all the good stuff. Mm. There are 100 complaints filed with the FDA And then there were around 3,000 reports on the website IWasPoisoned.com, which is basically like Facebook for food poisoning. Wow. (laughs) Both General Mills and the FDA are looking into this, obviously, though. It's unlikely there's a widespread health issue here. So why does this really matter? Between social media and sites like IWasPoisoned.com, it's super easy for customers to go online and say that they got sick from Lucky Charms and everyone can see that. And when you see someone else do that, Maybe you'll associate your own health problems with that. You're like, someone else got sick from Lucky Charms. Oh, I don't feel so good. Maybe I had Lucky Charms yesterday. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here and how often this happens, not just with Lucky Charms and cereal, but just in food in general. A lot of people are saying stomach cramps, and I'm just wondering if maybe eating a bowl of sugar for breakfast is the problem. One would wonder. 
Well, anyways, in other news, U.S. home prices reached a median price record of $375,300, up 15% from a year earlier in March, as mortgage interest rates jumped and amid a shortage of homes for sale. Also, Tesla reported earnings yesterday beating expectations with automotive revenue hitting almost $16.9 billion, up 87% from the same period last year. And with that, let's discuss what on God's green earth happened to Netflix this week. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. So for context, shares of Netflix plunged yesterday 35% after the streamer reported it lost subscribers for the first time in 10 years. The company shed more than $50 billion in market cap as a result, and at least nine Wall Street firms downgraded the stock on the report. So the obvious question here is, what the f*** happened? And it seems people were expecting a slowdown in growth, but lost subs, people did not expect that. So what's going on? Mm -hmm. Really, there are a few things happening here. The first is that the pandemic pulled Netflix growth forward a lot. You know, people have been discussing this since the pandemic started. There's just not that much more growth to cover, uh, especially in the U.S., at least for Netflix. Mm -hmm. The second thing is this concept of password sharing, which has finally caught up, it seems, with Netflix and its bottom line. Netflix estimates 100 million households are now sharing their subscription passwords with other families or friends outside of their homes. Wow. So this is a, you know, a problem. Lastly, Netflix had a humongous head start on streaming, obviously, but the legacy folks have finally caught up. And now Netflix's offerings just they just aren't that different from everything else out there, Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, HBO Max, which by the way is only going to be growing even larger with its discovery merger. Right. You have this funny situation now where Netflix is the incumbent fighting against the previous incumbents who are now innovators. Mm -hmm. So what is Netflix doing about it? The company said it's considering a lower priced ad supported tier and they suggested a crackdown on password sharing is on the way. It's already testing a feature that makes you pay a little more for users on your account that are outside of your house. Now, and, and the numbers vary, but analysts say both of these moves would net Netflix billions in new revenue annually. Now, Netflix has already begun a push into merchandise and gaming, not super seriously yet, like not in a super meaningful way yet, but they've done that. Perhaps they'll move into live TV or niche sports like Formula One. I don't know. What do you think? The kinds of things that keep people subscribed are new content that they want to see and old favorites that they keep returning to. And I feel like Hulu and Amazon are also kind of doing that. Yeah. And they may be doing that for less. I do think the Netflix push into gaming is pretty smart because that is what Amazon's doing. Right. Amazon's got its own gaming streaming system. Amazon spent a bunch of money on Lord of the Rings. Right. <laughs> Netflix wants a Game of Thrones. It's trying that with The Witcher. It bought a bunch of really actually good gaming studios. It's already got, I think, a lot of the infrastructure to make that work. But yeah, it just, I, it, it's, I think people are acting like, oh my God, Netflix is over. But I, yeah, I think Netflix kind of just hit a ceiling for the moment. Yeah. Um, and it's got a lot of stuff on the way that I think might play out for it, including its expansion into other countries and bringing that content to us. Yeah. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. That is it, folks. For more on the Hustle's tech and business coverage and links to all kinds of cool stuff from around the web, check out our newsletter at thehustle.co. Thanks to our editor, Ezra Trupiano and executive producer, Darren Clark. I'm Jacob Cohen. You've been listening to the Hustle Daily Show brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network. See you tomorrow. Hey, guys. If you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.